My name is John Cook, my friends call me Johnny, and you can have an unlimited supply of cut glass bottles, large and small, ready for your next craft project. Watch this video. You can see this new machine. It is absolutely fabulous. We're getting started pretty early in the morning. We've got the machine all set up. We've got some bottles ready to go that we want to take and separate. We've got our coffee cup out there, so we're ready for a coffee break. And our tools are good. We're ready to go. So we're getting ready to start. We're going to start with this green bottle. I think it's really a, a, a beautiful bottle. I used to be afraid of cutting these big bottles, but this machine makes it really easy. And now I've got my friends all trained to get me their big spirit bottles. You know, this machine works really well for wine bottles and small bottles, but it also works really great for these larger bottles. And you can seem to be able to do more with the larger bottles. You're able to make candles and chimes and stuff like that. So here we got the bottle taped to the driver. That little rotisserie motor, it doesn't look like much, but boy, it really does a nice job. It's like an extra set of hands. It, it gets that bottle turning, so you don't have to do that. The rubber band, you can see how it works with this close-up. It pretty much holds the bottle down under the rollers, and that's like another set of hands. This is so many sets of hands, all you have to do is sit back and smile and let it do itself. Well, not exactly. Well, now we're ready to cut. It's important to use the plexiglass shield. The shield keeps debris from hitting you or, in this particular case, from the camera. I always do this outside with the wind at my back. I've got a shop vac hooked up, and it, there's a vacuum tube right under the area that's being cut. It picks up most of the debris, but there still is a certain amount flying around. So you have to wear gloves. you got to wear safety glasses. It's a good idea to wear a mask, although here we're outside, wind at my back. But there still is a certain amount of debris floating around. It was here we're ready to cut. We penetrate the bottle. Sometimes I like to hold the bottle a little bit for the initial penetration. Then we let it take and do a complete turn. In this particular case, I'm getting ready to, to catch the bottom when, when the bottom falls off. You don't always need to do that, but I like to do that. It just keeps things a little bit neater, and I don't have to pick broken glass up out on the road. Anyway, so this does a nice job. And then once the bottle is off, I let her turn for another complete rotation, and it kind of dresses up the edge and makes the sanding process really easy. And, and it, this, you don't really have a bottle. It's not really ready to go until the sanding is done. So in this particular case, we're letting it rotate another turn. The rubber band's doing its job. The driver's doing its job. The plexiglass is doing its job. The vacuum is doing its job. And I'm doing my job. So anyway, we're done rotating, and now we're going to get ready to sand. And I think it's really important to take a good look at the bottle every step of the way and look and see if there's any reason that you don't want to go forward with it. Maybe there's a chip or, or, or a little crack or something that you can't sand out. But you really should determine that before you go too far. So here we're, we're sucking up the, right, the debris that ends up back in the bottle after we cut it, putting the vacuum back in place so it's ready to go for the next. We'll take the bottle out and we'll get ready to start the sanding process. Sanding process is really easy. We use aluminum oxide sanding paper. You can get the discs on whatsnewjohnny.com. And a Bauer polisher drives it just at the exact right slow speed so the bottle doesn't get too hot and it doesn't get shocked. I mean, it's, it's a nice, easy process. And I've cut the bottle sanding time down from a few minutes to less than a minute in almost all cases. Heavier bottles take a little bit longer. You still have to be careful. You've got to wear the gloves, the mask and so on and so forth. But I think you'll see this too. The vacuum, there's a vacuum pickup tube for the sanding process. And we make sure the bottle is ready to go forward and then we get ready and we get the sander set up and we're ready to go. Again, I want to give credit to that pulley and to that rubber band. It does a nice job. Here we're sanding the bottle. It's going at a nice slow speed. I think it's 650 RPM. And it's perfect for the bottle. It doesn't get too hot and the paper is fairly fine, it doesn't get, it doesn't shock the glass. And when we're satisfied, we got the bottom pretty smooth. Then we take the outside corner of the bottle 
and we rotate it around on the disc and we sort of break that sharp edge. And then I've got a stick with a piece of sandpaper that are wrapped around it. Actually a, a worn out or a used disc that I can get just a little bit more out of it. So when I'm done sanding, I inspect the bottle. I make sure it's good to go. I break that outer edge and then I use the sandpaper on a stick and I break that inner edge. And I think that's really important. This is really a great machine. You can take and build this machine in less than 30 hours. The plans on it are $10. You can get them at whatsnewjohnny.com. We tell you where to get everything and how much it costs. And here's my wall of chimes. This shows you that I, I do take cut bottles and I make stuff out of them. So here we go again. It's going to repeat. But go, you can go to the best ever glass bottle cutting machine 2.0 and you can wash it again and again and again. But in either case, go to whatsnewjohnny.com. Thank you.